Hello and welcome to this CD-ROM interactive tutorial, Learning the World Wide Web. I'm Paul Bartlett along with Leslie Ransbury. Since its creation in 1989 in Geneva, Switzerland, the World Wide Web is now used by millions of people. The World Wide Web is unique because it gives us access to worldwide information in just a matter of minutes. In this introduction chapter, we will teach you how to learn best using our interactive training system. Let's get started by moving to the next screen. You can do this by clicking the Continue button. The Continue button will be located at the top of the text box that will appear directly beneath us. It is the second button from the left and has a right arrow on it. This is a typical looking screen within our tutorial. You can see it looks like the actual program this tutorial is teaching. This tutorial is fully interactive, so sometimes instead of clicking the Continue button to move on to the next screen, we may ask you to perform a task, like click the File menu or type a word. The commands given in this tutorial use the mouse unless otherwise specified. Terms such as select, choose, highlight, double click and drag refer to the mouse cursor and the left button of the mouse. When we use the right button of the mouse, we will tell you it is the right mouse button. Now that you know what is covered in this tutorial and how to use the user interface, let's get started. When you click the Continue button, you will return to the Chapter Selection menu. Once at the Chapter Selection menu, choose Chapter 1 to start learning. We can access the web and tour the White House in Washington, D.C., or we can explore an art gallery. But finding this information can be difficult because there are more than a million documents on the web. In this tutorial, we will demonstrate how to access many documents. To access the web, we need a computer with a modem and an account with a service provider. We will assume that you already know the fundamentals of using an online service and using Windows. If not, please refer to our other online tutorials. Remember, the web is changing constantly. Therefore, the appearance of your screen may sometimes differ slightly from the CD-ROM tutorial. Hypertext is not difficult to use, but it is easy to get lost in the web. Therefore, there are navigational buttons that will lead us through the web. Navigational buttons are usually similar in all programs. During our explorations, we may discover a website that we want to quickly return to. We can use bookmarks to store this information. The term hot list is also used in many programs. There are more than a million codes that can take us to web resources. These codes can be found in computer books, magazines, and other resources. Later in this tutorial, you will learn about many codes to enter. Sometimes we may click on an underlined word and then decide not to download it. In most programs, we can quickly stop the downloading process. Many programs display current information about their products on the web. This makes it easy to stay up to date with the web and programs. Notice information about the underlying word appeared. We can click on another link to find additional information. Exploring various links is referred to as surfing the web. By clicking on many hyperlinks, we notice how easy it is to get lost in the web. The Options menu will let us customize our browser by simply selecting a few commands. Let's hide the toolbar and URL bar. As mentioned earlier, there are literally millions of addresses. Many of these addresses will lead individuals to Starting Points Pages, which is basically an introductory page on a program. Starting Points Pages are made by software companies or private individuals. Many of these pages have useful entry points into the web. We can also use Subject Trees, which is an alphabetized list of web documents. Let's now open another file that uses Subject Trees the mother of all BBS. Everything in this file has been created by users. Some of these topics are strange, but others are informative. For example, some of the topic names include DARS Dog World, Tape Heads, or Fishnet.
When entering the URL, we should not leave spaces in the address. Subject trees let us narrow down our search for topics. The trees are usually simple to use. Most search engines operate in the same manner and are easy to use. Search engines are commonly known as spiders, robots, or wanderers. First, we'll learn about Lycos. Now let's learn about the virtual tourist and city net search engines, which are used to find information about geographical areas. We at Via Graphics would like to thank you for choosing our company for your software training needs. Remember, if you plan to learn the World Wide Web or any computer software, there is no better way than through CD-ROM interactive training with Via Graphics. The web truly offers some amazing locations to visit. For the remainder of this CD-ROM, we will visit some of these exciting sites. We will explore topics such as art, politics, education, and others. We will first tour the arts. Let's now examine information about government and politics. Let's now explore some online shopping malls and then view current events. In the future, most people will probably visit their congressman's office through the web. Senator Don Nichols of Oklahoma already has information on the web.